frequency drive to control, let's say, a cooling tower fan. All right. Used to, what did we use to control our tower fans? Just a little aquastat, right? Now, this is assuming you don't have a, a building automation that's controlling it. If you have a standalone, you know, just an uh, aquastat, you can control that fan, throttle the frequency back, save a lot of money on your, your tower fans. You can do it with a temperature controller. Next week we'll be getting into this particular controller. But what we're looking for in this application is two things to control. We're looking for a reference speed signal and we're looking for permission to run. That permission to run is a digital signal, dry contacts across two of our terminals, six and eight. The reference signal can be a potentiometer, can be zero to 10 volt DC, two to 10 volt, four to 20 milliamp. And those go across uh, just two terminals here, two and three for instance, for your uh, zero to 10 volts. Now, how many of you are very comfortable with a zero to 10 volt DC signal? Pretty straightforward. How about closed contacts? Okay, so wiring wise, no mystery yet. Seem pretty straightforward. The only thing I ask is when you uh, bring your signal cable here, your control cables, there's little straps that come with this. Uh, you want to use shielded cable. And when you take that shielded cable, you want to make sure that you expose the shield as it comes across this bridge. Strap it so that you ground the signal to this chassis. Good ground is good. So if you have good signal coming into this, and it's pretty easy to do, make sure your power conductors come in, they're not nicked, you want to have good integrity of your power wires coming in, make sure they're tight enough, proper torquing, then you should have a fairly trouble-free install. Now what I'm going to do is power this up and go through a real quick setup. How much time we have? We, I think we have time. Give it just a few seconds to boot up. Okay, what I just did is just with a few keystrokes, I've dumped all the programming that might be in here because I don't know who might have messed with this. So now what we're doing is we're starting from scratch. When this thing comes out of the box, this is what it's like. It's going to come up. Has anybody never ever touched a frequency drive? Thank you. I appreciate you volunteering. <laughs> you didn't know that you was volunteering. Okay, um, I need you to set this up for me. Would you be willing to? I tell you what, let's just, so it looks nice, mm -hmm. let's do this. All right. Uh, what's it asking? English. Okay. I guess that's preferred language. Go ahead and hit OK for English. All right, now what is it asking? U.S., Russia, EU, I uh, Okay, I guess we can go with U.S., all right. Inter uh -huh. Time. Let's just not worry about the time and date because it doesn't have to have that. It can run off that. All right, now what is it asking? Startup wizard. Okay, let's hit okay, yes. All right, it's a startup wizard. Now it's going to ask you some very complicated questions. <coughs> and, uh, that's where it gets dicey. <coughs> and that's where I'll be glad to help you out. I'm willing to come out and answer that question for you. I can look at it and say, yep, that's, that's a fan right there. Glad to help you. All right, so let's call this a fan. Hit OK. 
All right, now it's going to ask for fans RPM. RPM. So now you look at the motor nameplate. Let's just go ahead and hit OK because I've got a fan motor right here. All right, now How many amps? amps, put in the nameplate amps. All right, what else? Ready to start. Ready to start. Hit OK. Wow, that was hard, wasn't it? Okay, uh, you you can uh, you can sit down now. How many of you have bought a via, a frequency drive, and with it you got factory startup? Pretty common. How much does that cost? Mm, sometimes it's a little pricey. Uh, I used to work for a mechanical, and I always, when I bought a drive, would get factory startup. Um, do you need factory startup with this? I don't know. That wasn't too complicated. I think we can handle this. Uh, now, I'll be glad to come out and help you uh, with some parameters. If, if we need to tweak it, I'd be glad to help you out with that. But this thing is ready to go right now. If I wanted to hook this up to a cooling tower, through a controller like this. Let's just see if we can do it. I can't see anymore. Oh. oh, I can't find my output. Okay, we'll need to cut this from the video. I don't have my wiring diagram. I'm, I can't remember which wires I hooked to. Uh, so I'll just tell you, before, after the end of the class, I'll grab the wiring diagram. We'll hook it up and we'll actually mess with it. All it takes, two conductors shielded, hook to your zero to 10 volt DC out, across six and eight, on your terminals, not two and three. And then we would need a switch, a time clock, dry contacts, across six and eight. That's all we need. All right, let's give it um, the permission to run. I'm gonna close contacts across six and eight. I'm running. Now, what is controlling the speed of my fan here? It's the zero to 10 volt DC signal that I'm putting across two and three, which is analog input one. That's this right here. As I give it more voltage, I'm gonna ramp up. And if you notice, there was a, a slight delay. It's a 30 second ramp up time. Now if we had said that this is a pump, it would have had a five second built in ramp up time. All right, now we've seen how it works. Now let's, let's change something. First of all, let's look at the monitor. I tell you, you want to come back up here? Since you are now factory certified to start up these things. All right, uh, this is my main menu. Do you see that second one right here? It says monitor, go to monitor. Uh, now in the monitor, you're gonna look at information from the drive. Uh, you can look at one piece of information or it's got a neat little feature that says multi-monitor. On that multi-monitor, it just throws up nine pieces of information here. Uh, one piece, what's this tell us? 
That's the hurts that it's wanting. Not that it's running, it's what you're telling it. All right, then the next is what it's doing. I'm going to no longer give it, why don't you cut it off the, the digital input one. All right, now you see the difference in information. You see the hertz that it wants to drive. All right, but the actual hertz is zero. zero. Uh, because we're not giving it permission. The time clock hadn't initiated. All right, let's turn it back on. Now, let's do something. Let's change a parameter. Alright, what I want you to do is just hit, uh, hit back to go, make sure you're at the very beginning of the program. What we want to do is change something, mm -hmm. and I want you to do it. And see, so you've never really messed with this, although you're about to become an expert. Alright, we want to change a parameter. Let's look up here, and where would you change a parameter? Under parameters. Under parameters. Imagine that. We'll scroll down and hit parameters. Okay, uh, under this, scroll down until you see ramps and brakes. Now, if we want to change the ramp up, and that's what we're about to do, we're going to change how quickly it ramps up. Where are we at here? Ramps, accelerator. accelerator. Okay, let's go ACL time, scroll down, hit enter. Now, so far, it's, it's, does it look pretty simple and easy? All right, now. What's it say? Edit. Edit. He's going to hit OK to edit the number, and the number is what? 30. What are you going to change it to? Change it to 15. We're going to change it to 15. All right. As long as it's flashing, you can change it. Then once you change it, hit OK to accept it. Now back up. All right. Hit back again because you're in edit. All right. Now you're right where you were. All right, you can back up one more time. You just changed the parameter. All right, and my book, where's my book? Oh, oh well, we're on our own. <laughs> you can set this thing up. If you don't have a book, it's no big deal. All right, um, sometimes when you install drives, you'll notice when you ramp it up through the range, at a certain frequency, you might get a little shimmy. Anybody notice that? All right, so you might want to mask out that shimmy. All right, you're in parameters. All right, scroll down and, and very carefully look in this and see if you can figure out. No, that's, uh, we, we want to change. All right, you see, what does that say? Prohibit frequency. Prohibit frequency. Does that kind of make sense that if we want to mask out a frequency it would be in the category of prohibit frequency? Hit enter. All right, what's it say? A range. All right, you've got range one and two. Well, I mean, uh, actually you've got three, range one, two, and three. Among those, you've got a high and low to mask out. So let's do range uh, one, low limit, Hit enter, edit, all right. Now, we've got a minimum hertz built in of, of actually 20 hertz. That's, that's what it's like. Now, we can change it, all right. What frequency would you like to mask out? Let's, it's got to be above 24. All right, so bring up 24 hertz. And bottom line, what I'm doing with this exercise is showing just how easy it is to set this thing up. And you, again, you don't have to have the book.